All right, so for this video, we're gonna be doing Taylor Brooks and ESPN analysis. And we're gonna do a facial analysis to see how attractive she is. So this is gonna be very interesting. All right, so her overall facial rating is a 6.5. How rare is that? That's one in 18 people. And the percentage of people is the top 5%. Her side facial score is a 42%. Her front facial score is a 71%. Her total facial harmony is a 59%. Her facial dimorphism is a three. Her body fat factors is a nine. And her miscellaneous features is a nine. Now the tier list to the right side, tier one, ideal, tier two, near ideal, tier three, normal, tier four, slight flaw, tier five, flaw, tier six, huge flaw, and tier seven breaks harmony. All right, so these are the overall facial assessment breakdown of the things that I feel like I noticed that are obvious flaws in her face. So she doesn't have enough bone protrusion underneath the eye. This will result in a buggy eye appearance in her front view profile. And her facial convexity overall looks to be more on the rounder side due to the jaw not being due to the jaw being slightly recessed. So she does have a bit of jaw recession. So her facial convexity from the side view profile is a little bit rounded and she doesn't have enough bone protrusion underneath her eyes. So from the front view profile, her eyes might seem a bit buggish, even though it might not look like that, but it is. So yeah. These are the rarity scores of other celebrities. So y'all can compare. All right, so her facial dimorphism for females, and these are uh, the facial dimorphism for females, and she only got a three out of 10, and that is for the dominant middle third, her jaw frontal angle, and her eyebrow tilt. So her face is more, slightly more on the masculine side of things, and she does have a lot of masculinized traits. It might not seem like that because she does have very good facial harmony, but she does have a lot of masculinized traits. Her facial uh, fat factors is a nine. And um, yeah, she literally marks all the boxes. So that is perfect. Her mis her miscellaneous features and uh, th my fault, this was body fat factors. Body fat factors is worth 25%. And also facial dimorphism is worth 20% of the overall score. So let me let y'all know about that. All right, so miscellaneous features is worth 15%. And the only thing that I marked a little bit off of is for the skin quality. And it's for something that is something very minuscule, it's really because of a mole. And um, that is can, can be a little bit subjective, but she didn't really didn't lose that many points off of it. She still got a nine for miscellaneous features. So miscellaneous features wasn't really bad at all. All right, so her eye separation ratio is a tier one. So this determines how far apart are your pupils relative to the distance between your cheekbones and hers is at 42.2 percent and that is ideal her facial thirds is perfect they should be one third each so around 33 percent and it should not deviate more than three percent away from the three which it does not so this is a tier one her canful tilt is a tier two at 5.5 degrees if it had 0.5 degrees more at six percent or at six degrees, I mean, this would be ideal, but this is still near ideal and this is still perfect still. Like this is really, really good. So she really doesn't lose too many points for that. Her facial width to height ratio FWHR. So the features within your face, how compact or elongated is are they uh, relative to the width of your face? And hers is a tier two at 1.83. So her face is a little bit more on the longer side. And this is still not bad. You can still be attractive with a more longer face or features that are more spread it out. So this is not too bad. Uh, her jaw frontal angle is a tier one at 92 degrees. 92 degrees is perfectly fine for a female face. And she does have a pretty wide jaw. And um, a jaw like this is very perfect. Like this is within the... All right, so the next one is cheekbone high settiness. So high, high set is your cheekbones relative to your mid face. Hers is at 69%. 69% isn't that bad, but it's still at the lower end. And you do want to have 
higher set cheekbones, especially for a female face. And she does get deducted some points for that. And it is less um, feminine. So she does get deducted some points for that as well. So that would be a tier four. So that's a slight flaw. Her total facial height to width ratio. So how long is her face relative to the width of her face? And hers is at 1.36. Preferably females have slightly shorter faces or head shapes, I should say. And her head is a little bit longer than it needs to be. So this is still going to be near ideal. This is not a flaw by any means necessary. And this, this is still perfect. Her bigonial width. So how wide is her jaw relative to the width of her face? or her cheekbones and this is at a tier one at 85 percent this is at the lower end but it's still within the ideal range so that that's all that matters her chance of filtering ratio is a tier one at 2.31 that is literally in the middle of the distribution of the ideal range so this is perfect so her chin does harmonize well with her filtering her neck width so she does have uh, a pretty skinny neck but it's still wide enough for her face at 80 uh, percent and this and 80 percent is perfectly fine for a female for a female face and um this is going to be ideal and females is usually between 75 to 85 percent so she's literally in the middle of the distribution her mouth to nose width ratio is a tier 2 at 1.41 so her nose is just a little bit slightly wider than what it should be and your mouth width should be within the inner iris of the eye which it is for her but her nose should be within the corners of her eyes and it is slightly past the corners of her eyes so that's why it's not within the ideal range it just slightly over it her mid face ratio is a tier one at 1.08 Females tend to have more compact mid faces and hers is more on the more compact side of it, which is perfectly normal. Her eyebrow steadiness, so how high set is her eyebrows relative to her eyes or relative to the eye line? And hers is at 1.11 or 1.11 and that is still within the normal range. It's just for a more defined and more um, feminine and i guess you can say sexier face um your eyebrows need to be more closely set to your eye line and that will make your face look more better looking and it will harmonize other features as well her eye spacing one whisk eyes apart preferably you want your eyes to be one whisk eyes apart hers is a tier four at 84 percent and that means that her eyes is a little bit closer together and um, preferably you want your eyes to be a little bit more farther apart. So for hers, her eye spacing is just slightly off. So that is gonna be a slight flaw. Her eye aspect ratio is a 2.4. 2.4 means that her eyes is actually on the more rounder side of things. Now it might not seem like they, it might not seem like that because she is, she does have um, eyelashes on. So it kind of makes her eyes look a little bit more narrow than it really is. But her eyes is just a little bit more too rounded so um but it's still within the closer to the ideal range so this is technically not a flaw by any means necessary but her eyes is just a little bit too rounded to be within the ideal range her lower lip to upper lip ratio is a tier two at 1.25 now preferably you want your upper lip to be slightly less than your bottom lip now if her upper lip was just slightly less then it would be within the ideal range but technically this is not a flaw by any means necessary this is still not bad her deviation from her ispilateral alier angle and her jaw frontal angle so the ispilateral alier angle is the angle created from the mid face it goes from the sub nasal all the way to the outer edges of the eyes and it should not deviate more than five degrees if it deviates more than five degrees then that's when it's not ideal. And if it also deviates more than 15 degrees, that's when it becomes a flaw. So hers is at four degrees, so this is perfectly fine. So there is good harmony between her isper lateral alier angle and her. The eyebrow tilt is at tier one, perfectly fine at 13 degrees. 13 degrees means that she does have very tilted eyebrows for a female, and that is perfectly fine. And it makes her face look more youthful. 
bitemporal width, her bitemporal width is around 90%, 90% of the cheekbone width. And this is perfectly fine. Her forehead exposure is on the wider side, but still this is perfectly fine. So her bitemporal width is very good. Her lower third proportion, so this measures your lower third proportions or the lower third. And hers is at 33%, so it goes from the subnasal down to the lip line. And um, that is going to be divided by the subnasal all the way down to the chin. And it should be around 33%. And it measures to see if your upper third or your upper region of your lower third is harmonized well with the whole third of your lower third, if that makes any sense. And hers is literally within the middle which is 33%, so that is perfectly fine for a lower third proportions. Her ispilateral alar angle, like I said again, hers is perfectly fine on 96 degrees. Now, women tend to have more wider set eyes, so for a man, this will be outside of the ideal range, but for a female, this is perfectly fine because females tend to have more wider set eyes. Their, their, the shape of their head is more horizontally, more horizontal and men their shape of their heads is more vertical so that's the reason why some of these measurements are like this and also the difference between male faces to female faces her gonial angle is a tier one at 127 degrees 127 degrees is a little bit more on the obtuse side for a gonial angle but this is perfectly fine for a female because females have less sharper gonial angles her nasal frontal angle is a tier two at 138 degrees. That is literally one degree off of the ideal range, but this is still perfectly fine for a female face. And this determines how protrusive is your brow region. And her brow region isn't that protrusive, but it isn't bad at all. Her mandibular plane angle, so this measurement determines how down swung is your jaw or your mandible and hers is at 24 degrees. So what that means is that her mandible is a little bit more on the downswung side of things. I guess you can say that. And at 24 degrees, it's not bad, but it's a little bit more on the downswung side. Her ravens to mandible ratio is a tier three at 55%. So she doesn't have that much jaw body, as you can see right here, because her ramus is not that long relative to her mandible. But this is still not bad. This is still within the normal range. It just preferably do want a little bit longer of her ramus. Her facial convexity, all right, like I said again, her facial convexity is a little bit more on the rounder side. Preferably, you want to have a facial convexity that is at least 168 degrees. Hers is at 159 degrees, so that is going to be off by a couple, or actually a lot. And this is going to be, um, this is going to break harmony, I'm not going to lie. This is, this is kind of off right here, so this is going to be the start of her flaws right here. Her submental curvical angle is 123 degrees. Now this is not ideal at all. And the reason why the, her submental curvical angle is off is because she does, now the hyoid bone, I don't know if I know what a hyoid bone is, but she doesn't have any submental fat underneath the chin, which is good. But her hyoid bone, which is, the, which is usually on the upper region of your neck, sticks out too far. So when your hyoid bone sticks out too far, what happens is it makes this angle obtuse and you do not want the angle to be obtuse and is not going to help at all. Um, so yeah, if her hyoid bone wasn't sticking out this far and this angle was to be a right angle, this would have been ideal. But since her hyoid bone sticks out and she does have bad neck posture, um, it's not going to be ideal. So yeah, that is going to be a flaw right there. Her nasal facial angle is a tier one. This is the inner angle created from the nose to the chin, and it determines the relationship between the nose and chin without determining um, or without including her facial convexity. So this is without the facial convexity at all. And hers is at 33% or 33 degrees, I mean, and this is perfectly fine. So she does. Next measurement is a nasal labial angle. Hers is a tier two, just slightly off of the ideal range which is 122 degrees 122 degrees is very upturned and it for some reason it actually doesn't really look upturned but it is upturned 
maybe because of her the way her nose is kind of shaped i guess you could say but um usually you want it to have um around 90 94 to 117 somewhere around there so hers is a little bit on the higher end but this is still not bad she still gets points for this so it, and it's more on the feminine side of things so this is still not too bad her orbiter vector is a tier four and she is uh slightly negative so her orbital vector so the bone protrusion underneath the eyes doesn't protrude past her eyes and for that reason, she does lose a bit of points for this. Now, preferably, you do want your bone protrusion underneath the eye to protrude past the eye to make the eyes appear deep set and also to make the eye appear that is, you know, that it looks deep within the eye socket so it won't look too buggish. And yeah, her total facial convexity is 141 uh, degrees. 141 degrees is within the ideal range. It's actually in the middle of the ideal range. And it also takes into effect her nasal protrusion as well. Not only just the facial convexity of the face, but also the total facial convexity. So that's why they call it total facial convexity. So everything. And uh, this is perfectly fine. Her mental labial angle, so this is the angle created from the end of the chin all the way to the bottom lip, and hers is at 125 degrees, which is a tier one. And like I said, um, she does have a protrusive chin, which is good. And her bottom lip is not as protrusive, and I'm gonna explain a little bit later, but her chin is very protrusive, so I can see why she does fit within the ideal range of this measurement. Her facial convexity from the nasion, so instead of the going from the gabella like the other measurement, this one goes to the nasion, and hers is at 154 degrees. Now, when you're doing it from the nasion, it's gonna be six degrees less than from the gabella. So when you're measuring it from the gabella to the nasion, you just minus it by six degrees, and hers is still with outside of the ideal range. Like I said again, her facial convexity is too rounded and it's because of her chin like i'm gonna explain later but that's one of the reasons why and she doesn't really have a protrusive brow region so that's also an effect as well to why her facial convexity is more on the rounder side our nasal protrusion she doesn't really have a very protrusive nose hers is a tier three which is still within the normal range but preferably you do want a to have a nose that is more protrusive her nasal width to height ratio, so this measures how lengthy is the nose, so the actual length of the nose, and hers is at 0.95. Now this is still gonna be a flaw, and preferably you just wanna have a nose that is long. You don't want your nose to be short and stubby, which this shows that her nose is short and stubby. All right, so these are the four lip measurements, and I'm gonna go through them real quick. All right, so tier three, the upper lip touch the um the line which it should not touch the line and your upper lip should not be ahead of the bottom lip in this measurement so this is going to be a tier three so it goes from the tip of the nose down to the chin and preferably you want your bottom lip to be closer to the line than your upper lip and as you can see the opposite is happening so that's a tier three the h line goes from the upper lip down to the chin and you want your bottom lip to touch the line barely now her bottom lip is very close to the line but it does not touch the line so i gave it a tier two but this is still not a flaw nevertheless her s line goes from the middle of the nose down to the chin and you want the upper lip and the bottom lip to be at the middle of the line or at the line now her upper lip passes the line so therefore she couldn't get the full point or she didn't get any of the points at all so this will be a tier three and the bursting line goes from the sub nasal down to the chin and preferably you want your upper lip to be past the line and you want your bottom lip to be past the line but you want your upper lip to be more past the line than your bottom lip which it is and this is all relative now it says 3.5 millimeters ahead and the bottom lip 2.2 millimeters ahead but like i said this is all relative and i'm not gonna like be too exact but this is close enough so that's why i gave her a tier one for this so nasal mental angle so this 
uh, determines the relationship between the nose and the chin. This is another measurement of it, but it also takes into account your facial convexity with it. So hers is 130 degrees. So this is perfectly fine. And um, this is um, a perfect angle for uh, the nasal mental angle. So this is perfect. Her gonial to mouth relationship. So this, so this determines if you have an adequate size jaw for your face. And for her, her ramus slightly passes the mouth line. So this is gonna be perfect. So you want your ramus or this bone right here to be below the mouth line and um this bone is like think of it like two, these two vectors um coming across to meet each other right here and this is where the bone should be under the mouth line so yeah all right the recession relative to the frame for plan angle so she does now it might not seem like she doesn't have that much recession but she, trust me she does have a bit of recession now this is not too major or anything like that it's just a slight recession and she doesn't really have a protrusive brow region that, like i said again because of her facial convexity is being a little bit too rounded so these things do factor into that now obviously you want to have your chin to be past your um, nasion which is this part right here and you want it to be past your gabella which is this part right here which is the brow region and hers is not past any of these two points so that's why she got a recessed jaw or a slightly recessed jaw but she doesn't lose too many points for this so yeah her brow ridge inclination is uh, eight degrees now preferably you want your brow region to be um slightly bent back a little bit more or inclined back a little bit more for a female face now females tend to have less um brow ridge inclination than men but preferably you want to have just a little bit tad bit more brow ridge inclination for a female uh, her nasal tip angle is a tier one at 112 degrees. Now, anything less than this will gonna be is gonna be outside of the ideal range. And females tend to have um, more rounded out nasal tips than men because their nose is more upturned. So that's one of the reasons why. But preferably, anything uh, a nasal tip like this is gonna be ideal for a female. And any, anything less than this is gonna be outside of the range. So she does have a very pointed nose. All right, I'm gonna go through two other measurements real quick. And these two measurements don't count, but they're kind of good to know. All right, so the lower lip to the submental plane angle and hers is at 97 degrees. 97 degrees is perfectly fine. And this is just a way to determine if you have any submental fat underneath the chin and also the relationship between the lower lip and the chin now there's also the mental labial angle like i said again her mental labial angle was good and her sub her sub curvical angle was not good but it was because of her high hyoid but if you take that out of the consideration this submental fat right here is good so i can see why this angle is going to be perfect at 97 degrees so her sub mental plane angle is good now her sub mental curvical angle is not because of her high high like i talked about before but this is perfectly fine now this would not go and count or count towards her overall rating because it takes multiple measurements into one her inferior third of her face slash the lower third of her facial proportions so this is another way to determine if you have proper facial proportions of her lower third and hers is slightly off at 58 percent or 0.58 and this is going to be off by 0 0.5 or 0 0.05 i guess you can say and um i think it's because of her lips her lip measurement was kind of slightly off so maybe that's why this proportion of her upper third is kind of bigger than this lower portion of her lower third i guess you could say so is this right here this space gonna or this length of space is going to be divided by this lower length of space so the mouth line is a divider between those length of spaces and your in your upper length should be so this upper length of space when it's divided by the bottom length of space should get a get your ratio of 0 0.43 to 0 0.53 and anything more than this is going to be outside of those ranges but like i said again i believe it's because of her lip measurements that were kind of slightly off so if her lip measurements were not off then this probably would be 
somewhere within that range in my honest opinion but like i said again these two measurements would not count towards your overall score and um yeah this is pretty much it now if you want me to rate your face i will have my email down in the description and i will have my instagram down in the description make sure to dm me and within 24 to 48 hours after i give you the, the instructions on to what to do um you should be able to get your uh facial rating and um yeah so that's it